ஹலோ வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை ரெக்கார்டட் கிளாஸஸ் ஸோ திஸ் ரெக்கார்டட் கிளாஸ் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் எ டாபிக் ஃப்ரம் மொடியூல்ட் ஃபைவ் ஃப்ரம் தி கோர்ஸ் டிஸ்கிரீட் மேத்தமெட்டிக்ஸ் ஒரு டிஸ்கிரீட் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் செக்ஷன் நம்பர் ஃபைவ் பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஸ்பேனிங் ட்ரீஸ் இட் இஸ் ஏ டாபிக் ஃப்ரம் மொடியூல் ஃபைவ் அட்வான்ஸ்ட் டாபிக்ஸ் இன் கிராஃப் தியரி ஸோ லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் தி கண்டென்ட் ஹியர் Uh, you can see module number 5 advanced topics in graph theory uh, here we are discussing this recorded class uh, section number 5.5 that means spanning trees okay already we are discussed in the previous recordings uh, what is the meaning by trees and uh, the properties of trees all discussed before uh, recorded classes so we will go to this section 5.5 spanning trees okay so let's start the content here first i will give one outline to the uh, section number 5.5 spanning trees after that we will do some questions here so first of all we will discuss what is the meaning of spanning trees okay so a spanning tree for a graph g is a subgraph of g that contain every vertex of g and it should be a tree okay so this is the meaning of spanning tree so spanning tree means it is a subgraph of g okay spanning tree for a graph g is a subgraph of g that should contain every vertex of the graph and it should be a tree correct so what are the things uh, it should satisfy spanning tree what cannot have in the spanning tree you can see here so a spanning tree must be connected should be a connected graph okay Uh, connected means every vertex it should connect uh, every two pa- pair of vertices connected by a path correct so it should be connected second one it should be a symbol graph symbol graph means should not have loop or parallel edges okay and it should contain every vertex of the graph that three condition for the spanning tree so spanning sh- tree should be a connected uh, symbol graph and it contain every vertex of the graph now what cannot have in that graph you can see it should not have symbol circuit this is the important point here what is the meaning symbol circuit we are studied before before sections so symbol circuit means it is a circuit or it is a closed walk correct uh, it does not contain a repeated any repeated edge or repeated vertex and uh, first and last uh, uh, vertex should be same that is the meaning symbol circuit correct circuit means starting point and ending point should be same correct starting and ending should be same should not have any repeated edges or repeated vertex that is the meaning symbol uh, circuit so symbol circuit is not possible and a loop of course loop cannot be there because it is should be a symbol graph as i told you loop is not possible multiple edges not possible and symbol circuit also not possible okay so this cannot have in the spanning tree so spanning tree these three condition it should satisfy it should be a connected symbol graph and it contain every vertex of the graph for example you can see one example on the side here see here one graph g one graph is given a b c are the vertex and we have three edges are there okay you can see i am just writing number of vertices correct we have number of vertices equal to three vertices are there a b c and how many number of edges are there number of edges also 3 correct 1 2 and 3 three edges are there now from this graph i can form these three spanning trees okay you can see what are the spanning trees here a b c see all the all the vertex should be in the spanning tree that is the first condition correct so a b c all the vertex are there and it should be connected each pair of vertices should be connected by a path for example if you want to go to b to c we have a path correct to b to c so like that it is a connected graph and it should contain any uh, all the vertex correct that is the and it should be symbol graph symbol graph means there is no multiple uh, parallel edges or loops are not there correct so we have two edge only here in this spanning tree a b c are the vertex same way we can draw like this one and another three three spanning trees i drawn here now see here in this graph i didn't draw the edge this one correct if you are using this edge what happen there is a symbol circuit will form that means if you are starting from a if 
we are going B, then C, B, and then A. We can reach again A. That is the meaning of symbol circuit, correct? So it should not have the edge B and C. One of the edge we need to remove. Then only we will get to spanning tree. So spanning tree, one is important thing we need to check is that it should not contain any symbol circuit, okay? If it is there a symbol circuit, it should not be a spanning tree, that one. So this is simple example for the spanning tree. Okay, now let discuss some, some of the properties of the uh, spanning tree or some remarks about the spanning trees. You can see every connected graph, every connected graph has a spanning tree. Okay, so if you are getting a connected graph, we can find a spanning tree from that one. Okay, now a graph may have more than one spanning trees. Okay, a graph may have more than one spanning tree. This example itself you can see. Okay, more than uh, we have three spanning trees here, correct? And this graph is a connected, yeah? So every graph may have more than one spanning trees, okay? Now third condition, any two spanning trees of a graph, for a graph, have same number of edges. For example, you can see this uh, example here. See, first spanning tree, how many edges are there? There are two edges. Second spanning tree also, how many edges? Two edges. Third spanning tree also, how many edges? Two edges are there. So every spanning tree, uh, every two spanning tree, any two spanning tree for a graph have same number of edges. Now the fourth point, if a graph is a tree, then only spanning tree is itself, okay? Already if you are getting a tree, as a graph then the only spanning tree is the same graph itself okay so that is the fourth condition now apart from that we have some two results are there these two results are important results uh, uh, in spanning trees if g is a connected graph with the n vertices and m edges okay so in a graph we have n vertices and m edges then spanning tree of g must have n minus 1 edges okay if a graph having n vertices and m edges, spanning tree having only n minus 1 edges. n means number of vertices. For example, this graph you can see. How many vertices are there? Number of vertices equal to 3, correct? So in a spanning tree, how many edges will be there? That is what here this rule is telling. So spanning tree should have, must have n minus 1 edges, n minus 1. So here 3 is the number of vertices, so 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 means 2, correct? 2 edges should be. See, all the spanning tree only 2 edges. Here 1, here 2, correct? This also 1, 2. Here also 1, 2. So, spanning tree should have uh, how many edges? N minus 1 edges. N means number of vertices of the graph minus 1. So, okay? That is the point here. This we need to be uh, remember. And the second point, the number of edges. Okay? The second point is the number of edges that must be removed from the graph G getting a spanning tree is m plus n minus 1 this number is calling circuit rank of g so what is the point here how many edges we need to remove for getting a spanning tree for example see here see this graph this is the original graph from this graph how many edges we removed for getting a spanning tree one edge correct one edge we removed we are keeping only two edges keeping only two edges one edge we removed so how we are checking that one how many edges we need to remove number of edges must be removed from a graph for getting a spanning tree is m plus n minus one m means number of edges of the graph n means number of vertices of the graph plus one okay so for example here you can see m plus n minus one correct or not we can check it m plus n minus one how many edges are there in this graph three plus how many vertices are there three correct minus one so three plus three my uh, minus oh, sorry three uh, sorry m plus m minus n plus one that is the rule m minus n plus 1. So m means number of edges. How many edges? 3. Minus how many vertices? 3 plus 1. So 3 minus 3 plus 1 means how many it will get? Equal to 1. So how many edges we need to remove? Only one edge. See, from these three edges we removed one edge. So two edge will be there in the spanning tree. So that is the condition here. So how many edges we need to remove from a from a graph for getting a spanning tree is m plus n minus 1. So these two rules always uh, we need to remember for uh, creating spanning tree. Okay. So I will write here for example what is that two rules we are telling. For example if you are, a, if you are having a graph. Okay. If you are having a graph G. For example in this graph number of vertices. Okay. Number of vertices of the graph equal to n. And number of edges number of edges of the graph equal to 
m for example okay now when you are creating spanning tree okay what are the points we need to be careful spanning tree okay in a spanning tree how many edges will be there number of edges number of edges in a spanning tree is n minus 1 n means what is the meaning n number of vertices correct number of vertices minus 1 that is the number of edges in a spanning tree and what is the second condition we need to be careful how many edges we need to remove okay so edges removed number of edges removed from graph g correct so number of number of edges removed from graph g equal to m minus n plus 1 m means number of edges of the graph g okay minus n means number of vertices of the graph g plus 1 okay i hope you understood these two rule so spanning through these uh, spanning tree these two rules always keep in your mind number of edges equal to n minus 1 and number of edges removed from the graph g equal to uh, m minus n plus 1 okay hope you understood that one now for example one more example you can see example number one for example we have one graph here okay one two three four that are the vertices so i can write here number of vertices okay number of vertices equal to how many vertices are there four vertices correct that means number of vertices means we are representing by n so number of vertices n equal to four now number of edges okay number of edges m equal to how many edges are there you can calculate how many edges are there 1 2 3 4 5 correct so number of edges equal to 5 correct now from this graph i need to create the spanning trees okay so spanning tree means what is the condition all the vertices should be there correct so i can draw first spanning tree 1 2 3 4 see i keeping i am keeping all the vertices here because it should have all the vertices in the spanning tree now how many edges we need to remove from this graph so we have one rule is there m minus 1 m minus n plus 1 correct m minus n plus 1 so what is the m number here 5 minus what is the n number 4 plus 1 so 5 minus 4 plus 1 means equal to 2 correct so how many edges we need to remove from this graph two edges we need to remove then only we will get the spanning tree but it should include all the vertices that keep in our mind so first i am removing see this edge and this edge so i can get the first spanning tree like this okay see this edge i am not I removed and this also i am removed these two edges are not included number of edges we need to remove is two okay so we'll get first spanning tree same like that we can create many spanning tree like this one okay remove two edges uh, randomly okay it should not form a circuit a simple circuit that is why we are removing that two edges okay so we will get a different spanning trees like this one okay so this is the first spanning tree we are getting okay first one this is the second spanning tree three and four like eight spanning trees we are getting from that graph okay so uh, like this we need to uh, draw the spanning trees from a graph now what is the thing is that how many spanning trees we can create like this we need to know that one correct how many spanning trees we can create like this one okay by removing some edges how many spanning trees we can create for that uh, we need to study one uh, for one algorithm that is kirchhoff's theorem or Kirchhoff matrix okay using the Kirchhoff's theorem we can find how many how many uh, spanning number of spanning trees for a graph G okay we can form how many spanning trees we can form from a graph G we can calculate by using Kirchhoff's theorem or we can say Kirchhoff's matrix this is the important idea this section okay so or this is this is a tree theorem that tree theorem we are calling Kirchhoff's theorem or Kirchhoff's matrix so what is the meaning of Kirchhoff's theorem or Kirchhoff matrix? How many spanning trees we are getting from a, uh, from a graph, okay, from a graph G, from a connected graph G. For example, this graph we are getting 8, 4, this is 5th one, 6th one, 7th one, 8, 8 spanning tree we are getting, correct? So how we are getting this number, how many spanning trees we can form from a graph? For that we are using this rule, we are calling it as Kirchhoff's theorem or Kirchhoff's matrix. So, uh, first you can see what is the Kirchhoff's theorem. Let A be an adjacency matrix, capital A be an adjacency matrix. So what we are doing first, when we are getting a graph, first form an adjacency matrix from a graph. 
okay already you know we studied the before sections uh, how we are forming an adjacency matrix correct how we are writing adjacency matrix so whenever we are getting a graph just to form an adjacency matrix first capital a in the first step after that what we do just we are we need to create another matrix we are calling m m be the matrix obtained from the adjacency matrix that m matrix how we are forming we are forming from the adjacency matrix how we are forming by changing all one wherever one coming we need to write minus one change all one to minus one and replacing each of the diagonal zeros by the degree of that vertex okay diagonal number for example you can see the diagonal number these are the diagonal number these diagonal number we need to replace by the degree of the corresponding vertex okay we studied what is the meaning of degree of a vertex okay so so for example the first number here we need to change the degree of the vertex a second number we need to change the degree of the vertex b third number diagonal number we need to change the degree of the vertex c and fourth number we need to change the degree of the vertex d like that okay so what we are doing the diagonal number we need to change the degree of the corresponding vertex and wherever one coming we need to put minus one correct this is the second step we need to do after that okay whatever the matrix we are getting okay the number of spanning tree is equal to the value of any cofactor of that matrix that m matrix cofactor we need to calculate i will explain when we are doing question how to uh, calculate the cofactor of a matrix so cofactor of any element okay any cofactor of the matrix is the number of the spanning tree uh, spanning tree of the given graph g so this is the idea of the kirchhoff's theorem so let me go with one example for example here this is our graph okay one graph is given a b c and d these are the vertices we have four vertices so i am writing here number of vertices number of vertices equal to four and number of edges correct number of edges equal to you can see how many edges are there one two three four five edges are there correct number of edges equal to five here okay now how to how to find the number of spanning trees how to find the number of spanning trees by using kirchhoff's matrix okay this is what our question here so the question uh, is important question find the number of spanning trees of a graph of the graph g using kirchhoff matrix find the number of spanning trees of a graph g using kirchhoff's matrix so first step as i told you in step 1 when we are answering this question step 1 first to form the adjacency matrix of the graph g okay what is the adjacency matrix of the graph g how we are forming adjacency matrix of a graph g you know that one correct so even i will show here see i am drawing the graph again here this is the these are the vertices okay so a b c and d correct a b c and d now i am just writing the adjacency matrix here okay so from this graph i can form the adjacency matrix in the first step so step one adjacency matrix we can represent by capital a or a of g adjacency matrix of the graph g now adjacency matrix means just to consider the vertices so we can write the vertices here in order a b c and d here also a b c and d okay we studied how to form the adjacency matrix before classes so a b c and d now we can one by one we can end this mark okay so first entries so first a to a correct how many edges are number of edges from a to a that is zero a to a means it is loop so there is no loop there now a to b how many edges are there from a to b so one edge we can write here a to c a to c there is no direct edge so zero a to d we have one edge here so we can write one here correct <coughs> now similar way b for example we can write b so b to a b to a we have one b to b there is no loop and b to c one edge is there and b to d also one edge is there correct now c c to a c to a we don't have any directed edge 
and C to B we have 1 and C to C there is no loop C to D there is 1 and sorry C to C 0 C to C 0 and C to D we have 1 now D to A D to A we have 1 D to B also 1 edge and D to C also one edge and D to D there is no loop correct. So this is the adjacency matrix representing that graph G hope you understood that one. Now just to see the diagonal numbers this is these are the diagonal number I am highlighting here this 0 0 and 0 correct. Now this one see A this is coming in B and you can see C and D correct A to A and B to B C to C D to D like that okay. So that are the diagonal numbers in that adjacency matrix. Now, now in the step number 2, I am going to the step number 2. What we need to do in step number 2? We need to form a matrix M, capital M matrix, correct? Capital M is equal to, how we are forming that matrix, capital M matrix, okay? Just write, wherever 1 coming, we need to write minus 1. That is the condition, okay? 1 replies to minus 1. And diagonal zeros replace the degree of that corresponding vertex okay so first i am writing the diagonal number a to a this zero okay first number degree of the vertex a okay i will mark here first what is the degree of the vertex a here how many edges uh, going from that one two so here degree is two b what is the degree of the vertex b how many edges okay going from that one that is three so i can write here three and c what is the degree that is 2 okay and here d how many edges are incident 3 here same correct so a there are two edges are incident in that vertex okay b3 and c2 and d we have 3 so diagonal elements we need to replace by these numbers okay first number is 2 second number b vertex number of uh, sorry degree of that vertex is 3 c that is 2 and d is Three, correct like this one so 0 0 0 that 0 we are replaced already now <coughs> other elements wherever 1 coming we need to write minus 1 so this one we need to write here minus 1 0 same 1 we need to write minus 1 this one same here this one become minus 1 and here minus 1 here minus 1 and here 0 same 1 become minus 1 and 2 1 become minus 1, 1 become minus 1, here minus 1, minus 1 and the degree, correct. So this matrix we are calling the M matrix. So what we need to do uh, for step 2, wherever 1 we need to replace by minus 1 and diagonal zeros, correct. Diagonal 0 we need to change into degree of that corresponding vertex, correct. Degree of the vertex. So we will get a matrix M. So I hope you understood first step we created the A matrix like this. After that, we created the M matrix. This M matrix we are calling the Kirchhoff matrix. Kirchhoff matrix M we are getting like this one, 2 minus 1, 0 minus 1, minus 1, 3, minus 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, and minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and, and 3 we are getting, correct? Now, from this matrix, we need to find the cofactor of any element. Cofactor of any element means... Okay, you can take the cofactor of the first element. For example, what is the first number here? 2. Now, cofactor, how we are calculating actually? First number, if you are taking, delete that number coming row and column. Okay, delete the row and column, that number coming. Okay, take the remaining matrix here. What is the remaining matrix here? That is 3, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 3. Determinant of that one. Not matrix, determinant symbol. See, determinant symbol we studied before. So, this is the determinant symbol, absolute symbol. So, determinant of the matrix 3, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 3. Now, after that, calculate what is the value of this one. Okay, we studied the before course uh, how to calculate this one, this determinant of a matrix. Okay, I will explain here. So, how to calculate 3 minus 1 minus 1. I will show separately here. 3 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1, 2 minus 1, minus 1, 2 minus 1 and minus 1 minus 1, 3. Correct? Minus 1 minus 1 and 
3 correct now we need to calculate the determinant of this one okay so how to calculate determinant equal to take any one row or any one column for example i am taking the first row okay I can expand by using any row or any column. So first row I am taking row number 1. Now row number 1 first number is 3. Okay. First number is 3. So when we are going to expand the determinant. First number always we are writing the plus symbol. Number with plus symbol. Second number we are putting with minus symbol. And the third number with plus symbol. Alternative sign. Alternatively we can write first minus, uh, plus then minus then plus like that it is continuing. Okay. So first number is 3. I am writing here. Second number is minus 1 here. Third number here minus 1 here. Hope you understood that first step what I did. Okay. First row is selected. That numbers write in the alternative sign plus minus plus like that. Number same but sign alternatively we are writing in front of that number. Now. When we are taking the first number that means the number three okay number three coming row and column delete what are the remaining number take it what are the remaining number determinant two minus one minus one and three hope you understood that one okay two minus one minus one and three correct now same way now same way number two we will go to the number two now we will show here We can go to number 3. Before going, I will erase so that we will get, get more idea. Okay. Now, second number we are taking. What is the second number here? Minus 1. Correct? This number. Now, minus num 1 coming row and column delete. Write the remaining number. What are the remaining numbers? Determinant. Here we have two number. Minus 1 and minus 1. Here we have minus 1 and 3, correct? Minus 1 and 3, determinant of. Now same way the third number, minus 1 multiply, what is the determinant of that one, correct? So we can go to that one, next number, same idea, we can continue. Okay, so next number is this minus 1 so that number coming row and column we are deleting so take the remaining number what are the remaining numbers minus 1 and 2 minus 1 and minus 1 correct so this is the expansion of that determinant 3 by 3 determinant you can use the Saras method also uh, by using arrows but this is more easier than that so we will get like this now I am going to expand this one after so 3 plus 3 means same as 3 multiply main diagonal number multiply minus of diagonal number multiply main diagonal number means 2 multiply 3 correct minus minus is default of diagonal number multiply minus 1 multiply minus 1 main diagonal number minus of diagonal number now here minus minus 1 become plus 1 main diagonal number multiply minus of diagonal number multiply correct so we will get it like minus 1 multiply 3 minus 3 sorry minus 1 multiply 3 minus minus 1 multiply minus 1 okay main diagonal minus of diagonal now same way minus 1 plus minus 1 means minus 1 multiply here also main diagonal multiply minus of diagonal number multiply so we can get it minus 1 multiply minus 1 minus minus 1 multiply 2 you can use the calculator check what answer you are getting you will get uh, the number equal to 8 you will get the number equal to 8 okay so this number we are calling number of spanning trees okay for a graph g okay number of spanning trees so how many spanning trees we are getting eight spanning trees we are getting so this is the number of spanning trees number of spanning trees for the graph g so this is the idea kirchhoff matrix or kirchhoff uh, theorem so number of spanning trees we are getting here equal to eight so we need to do three steps in kirchhoff's uh, uh, kirchhoff's theorem or kirchhoff's matrix First step, we need to find the adjacency matrix. 
second step from the adjacency matrix find the matrix m kirchhoff matrix replacing 1 by minus 1 and uh, diagonal elements degree of that corresponding uh, vertices and in step 3 find the cofactor of the any element first element is better cofactor of the first element you will get one number that number we are calling the number of the spanning tree from that graph okay so i hope you understood the kirchhoff matrix okay now let me go to the exercise questions one by one so we will solve here exercise 5.5 first question question number one so question number one uh, careful it's important find the number of edges that must be removed from the graph g for getting a spanning tree we remember this rule we studied number of edges must be removed from a graph g for getting a spanning tree what is the rule we are studied m minus n plus 1 correct m minus 1 plus 1 number of edges removed from a graph g means for getting a spanning tree means m minus n plus 1 what is the meaning m number of edges what is the meaning of n number of vertices okay so number of vertices first n equal to number of vertices how many vertex are there 1 2 3 4 5 correct f b c d and e so we have five vertices now number of edges how many edges we can calculate there m equal to how many edges are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 correct we have eight edges now we can use the rule m plus m minus n plus 1 m means 8 minus n means 5 plus 1 correct so we will get equal to 4 so how many edges we need to remove 4 edges correct we need to remove 4 edges for getting a spanning tree from this graph okay hope you understood this question okay number of edges removed okay so number of edges removed is 4 edges now same way we can go to the second question same question how many edges must be removed from the graph g for getting a spanning tree correct so we can calculate first how many number of vertices in that graph n equal to and how many edges number of edges in that graph m equal to after that we need to calculate m minus n plus 1 equal to correct so from this graph how many vertices are there a b c d e correct 5 how many edges are there we can check it 1 2 3 4 5 correct so how many uh, what is, how many edges we need to remove m minus n plus 1 that means uh, we can calculate sorry 6 is there here one more edge we missed so 6 so we can calculate 6 minus 5 plus 1 that means equal to 2 so 2 edges we need to remove from this graph for getting a spanning tree hope you understood this question it's important question now we will go to the second question find a spanning tree find a spanning tree okay one spanning tree you can find for each of the following graph okay one graph first k15 is given okay k15 is given complete bipartite graph with 1 and 5 first partition one vertex second partition five vertex see red color i am highlighted here one vertex blue color i am highlighted with another partition five vertices are there correct so what is the question just find a spanning tree one spanning tree you can draw from this graph okay k15 so first if you are getting like this uh, question how to draw a spanning tree first we need to check how many edges must be removed from this graph number of edges must be removed from this graph so for that you can check how many vertices are there here 5 plus 1 6 vertices are there how many edges are there m equal to you can see 1 2 3 4 5 correct so 5 uh, edges are there Hope you understood from that graph so how many number of edges must be removed m plus n sorry m minus n plus 1 m minus n plus 1 means 5 minus 6 plus 1 equal to 0 there is no need to remove any edge because that graph itself a tree correct there is no symbol circuit there is no uh, loop or multiple edge it already connected it is a tree already that is why it is getting 0 if you are getting 0 means the graph itself a tree 
that means if the graph itself a tree means it is a spanning tree no need to go any other spanning tree it's itself a spanning tree for that graph okay so if you are getting number of edges removed is zero the graph itself should be a spanning tree okay we discussed that point just before now next question b part okay draw one spanning tree at least or find one spanning tree okay k4 k4 what is the meaning k4 actually k4 correct k4 means complete graph k4 means complete graph we studied before section complete graph k4 k4 means how many vertices are the number of vertices number of vertices equal to 4 because this k4 4 means number of vertices so we have four vertices one two three four what is the meaning complete graph actually each vertex should be connected with one edge see for example this vertex and this vertex connected with an edge this also connected this also connected with edge like that each vertex should be connected with one edge that is the meaning complete graph so we will get like this one how many edges number of edges number of edges in a complete graph means we can calculate like this n into n minus 1 divided by 2 or you can count also no problem so n means 4 multiply 4 minus 1 divided by 2 correct so we will get uh, the number here how many edges will be there here see here 2 we can cancel so 2 multiply 3 that means 6 correct so you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 so number of edges equal to 6 so keep in our mind this rule number of edges of a complete graph means n into n minus 1 divided by 2 here correct so n number equal to 4 number of vertices m number equal to 6 number of edges correct so how many edges we need to remove from here m minus n plus 1 correct m number is 6 minus 4 plus 1 correct so we need to remove like 3 edges 6 minus 4 means 2 plus 1 that is 3 so three edges we need to remove here that is we return here number of edges must be removed from the graph is three okay so this is the original graph k4 complete graph with four vertices correct now so if you remove three edges we will get like this see too many spanning trees we are getting see one two three four okay uh, 16 spanning trees are there three edges from each from the graph remove randomly so we'll get it you can see the removed edges uh, i am highlighted here by dotted line so these are the spanning trees we are getting here so this is the question here okay three edges remove and form the spanning tree why we are removing that three edges we should not have the uh, symbols are cute there okay hope you understood that question now we will go to the main idea of this uh, section find the number of spanning trees of a graph G by using Kirchhoff matrix. Number of spanning tree by using Kirchhoff matrix. This is what the important idea here. How to form the number of spanning tree? Find the number of spanning trees. Okay. Find the number of spanning trees by using which algorithm? Kirchhoff matrix. Kirchhoff's matrix. Okay. So we will do this question here. So Kirchhoff matrix, um, when we are forming, okay or number of spanning tree by finding by Kirchhoff's theorem we have three steps so first I am going step number one but we are doing for step number one first we need to form the adjacency matrix first step form the adjacency matrix a equals a or a of g adjacency matrix of the graph g okay so a equal to I am forming here how we are forming the adjacency matrix just to write a vertex here a b c and d here also a b c and d now you can see in the graph a to a there is no connection from there is no edges from a to a number of edges from a to a is zero a to b we have one edge here so one a to c uh, we have one edge correct this one a to D, there is no direct edge, 0. Same like we can continue. B to A, that is 1. B to B, 0. B to C, 1. And B to D, also 1. Same, we have C to, <coughs> C to A, 1. C to B, 1. C to C, 0. And C to D, that is 1. Now, D to A, 1. D to B, that is 1. 
d to c uh, 1 and d to d there is no direct edge from d to d correct d to a there is no so zero first number zero sorry first number is zero d to a there is no direct edge you can see that one in the graph okay so this is the first step i hope you understood the first step okay now i will go to the second step step number two okay step number two step number two what we are doing we need to write the kirchhoff matrix correct so we need to find the kirchhoff's matrix capital m so capital m equal to i am writing here capital m equal to the matrix what we need to do wherever one coming we need to write minus one wherever one we need to write it as minus one and the diagonal correct diagonal elements we need to replace by degree of that vertex correct so diagonal element means this number this number this number and this number degree of each for example a what is the degree of a here two because two edges are incident with that vertex correct b what is the degree three because here three d we have two c we have three correct so we can replace that number here correspondingly okay so let me start a to a a degree is two 1 we replace by minus 1, 1 we replace by minus 1, 0 same, okay. Now, second row, 1 replace by minus 1, B vertex degree, okay. B vertex degree is 3, 1 replace by minus 1, 1 replace by minus 1. Now, same third row, 1 replace by minus 1, minus 1, degree of C that is 3, 1 replace by minus 1. Now last D, uh, we can write 0, 1 replaced by minus 1, 1 replaced by minus 1 and degree of D equal to 2. So this is the Kirchhoff matrix. Hope you understood the M matrix. Now once you calculate M matrix, we will go to the step number 3. Okay, that is we need to write the cofactor. Cofactor of first element I am taking. cofactor of the first number first element okay so cofactor matrix of the first element equal to what we do for that one just take the first element okay i'm highlighting here the first element here remove the row and column remove the row and column write the remaining so what are the remaining three minus one minus one you can see first row and first column we removed remaining this num matrix okay determinant of that matrix so 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 so i can write here the determinant don't forget it is determinant so 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 2 correct now expand this determinant expand equal to okay Expand the determinant means you can select any one row or any one column. So for example, I am selecting the first two row, row number one. I am expanding by using row number one. The first element is three. As I told you, first number sign positive, that number right in the bracket. Second number minus, minus one. Third number again plus, minus one like this. Okay. Now, find the remaining part we can go so the first element is three so three number coming row and column we are deleting this row and this column we delete right remaining that is determinant three minus one minus one and two correct now the second one second element is minus one so minus one number coming row delete column delete so what are the remaining element minus one minus one minus 1 and 2 correct so we can write determinant minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 2 now same way third element third element is minus 1 minus 1 coming row and column delete so the remaining what we are getting minus 1 3 minus 1 and minus 1 so we can write determinant minus 1 3 minus 1 and minus 1 
Now expand this determinant equal to plus 3 means 3 main diagonal number minus off diagonal number. Okay. What are the main diagonal number? 3 multiply 2 minus off diagonal minus 1 multiply minus 1. Now minus minus 1 means plus 1 multiply again main diagonal number minus off diagonal number. Correct. Main diagonal number minus 1 multiply 2 minus off diagonal minus 1 multiply minus 1. Now plus minus 1 means minus 1 multiply again main diagonal minus off diagonal. Correct. So what are the main diagonal minus 1 multiply minus 1 minus minus 1 multiply 3. Okay. Now when we are using calculator you will get the number equal to 8. So we can write the answer number of spanning trees. Okay. Number of spanning trees by using Kirchhoff's matrix equal to 8. So this graph in the given graph how many spanning trees we can form 8 spanning trees we can form by using Kirchhoff's matrix we got number equal to 8. I hope you understood this question. Okay, we need to practice by paper so it will be easy. One more question same model I am doing here. Question number 3 B part. Find the number of spanning trees. Same question. Find the number of spanning trees uh, of a graph G using Kirchhoff matrix. Okay. So one graph is given here. I am going to step 1 first. Step number 1. First we need to calculate what is the adjacency matrix of given graph. Adjacency matrix. So to calculate the adjacency matrix we write the vertex here A, B, C and D. A, B, C and D. Correct. Now we can write the numbers one by one. A to A there is no edge number of edges is 0. Number of edges is 0. A to B number of edges 1 there is one edge. A to C there is no directed edge. A to D there is 1 correct. So 1. Now B to A. B to A that is 1. B to B 0. B to C 1. B to D there is no directed edge. So we can write 0. Now C to A. C to A nothing 0. C to B 1 and C to C 0 and C to D 1. Now D to A there is one edge, D to B 0 and D to C 1, D to D 0. So this is the adjacency matrix. Now we will go to step number 2. So step number 1 this is adjacency correct, adjacency matrix. Now second step what we do we need to calculate Kirchhoff's matrix correct. Kirchhoff's matrix we need to write from adjacency matrix for that one we need to replace 1 by minus 1 and diagonal number we need to replace by degree correct degree of the corresponding uh, vertex ok. So let me go m equal to matrix m equal to the matrix first you know what are the diagonal numbers the zeros these are the diagonal numbers so each diagonal number we need to write the degree of that vertex a a a means what is the degree how many edges incident 2 b what is the degree 2 c also degree 2 d also degree 2 all edges all vertices degree 2 so we can uh, write 2 first, 1 we write to minus 1, 0 same, 1 we need to write minus 1, minus 1, 0 same, minus 1, 0, sorry the diagonal number we didn't replace, diagonal number B uh, vertex degree that is 2. Now 0 number same as 0, My 1 becomes minus 1, C degree that is 2 and here minus 1, 1 becomes minus 1. Now last row 1 become minus 1, 0 same, 
1 become minus 1 and d degree is 2 correct so this is the uh, kirchhoff's matrix now i want to go to the step 3 step 3 means we need to write the cofactor correct of first element cofactor of the first element equal determinant of equal to determinant of what we need to do for that i am taking the first element so the first element coming row and column we are deleting take the balance remaining correct so what are the remaining that is 1 2 minus 1 0 and minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 and 2 so i can write here 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 and 2 now expand this one equal to expand this 3 by 3 determinant equal to expanding expansion by using the first row so first number is 2 i told first plus then minus then plus correct like this alternatively plus and minus okay now first number is 2 so 2 number coming row and column we are deleting so remaining determinant 2 minus 1 minus 1 and 2 minus minus 1 multiply second element is 1 so 1 coming column and row deleting so remaining determinant these four numbers correct so minus 1 minus 1 0 2 so i can write minus 1 minus 1 0 and 2 now plus 0 multiply anyway 0 multiply it is 0 just writing only 0 here 0 coming column and row deleting remaining minus 1 2 0 minus 1 minus 1 2 0 and minus 1 now expand by using 2 by 2 determinant expand so equal to plus 2 means 2 main diagonal number minus off diagonal number correct here also minus minus 1 plus 1 main diagonal number minus off diagonal number plus 0 again main diagonal minus off diagonal 0 multiply means it will be 0 so we can continue here main diagonal 2 multiply 2 minus off diagonal minus 1 multiply minus 1 here main diagonal minus 1 multiply 2 minus off diagonal 0 multiply minus 1 minus 1 multiply minus 1 main diagonal 0 multiply 2 off diagonal now we can use the calculator you will get the number so you will get the answer equal to 4 equal to 4 so we can write number of spanning trees number of spanning trees equal to 4 by using kirchhoff's matrix correct so this is what our question how many spanning trees we can form number of spanning trees of a uh, from a graph g using kirchhoff matrix equal to 4 we are getting so these three step we can practice easily uh, from this section so i hope you understood the idea kirchhoff's matrix and uh, how, to, how many edges we need to remove for getting a spanning tree so these two idea uh, we need uh, is the important content in this section how many edges how, how many edges need to remove okay for getting spanning tree okay for getting spanning trees okay and second idea we studied using kirchhoff's matrix using kirchhoff's matrix how to calculate how many spanning trees okay how many spanning trees we can form 
how many spanning trees we can form by using Kirchhoff's matrix. Hope you understood the ideas from this section. So thank you for watching uh, this recorded class. Please uh, subscribe my channel for getting more recorded classes. Thank you for watching.